Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Bowman, and I'm here to teach you one of the most important things about performance, and that's the relationship between performance and your arousal level, and how to get into what we call uh, the zone, which is where your mind is just in this quiet place, and your actions are effortless, and your performance is uh, outstanding. So in 1908, a couple of researchers named Yerkes and Dotson were trying to see what level of arousal mice needed to perform their best at solving mazes, how to get food from a maze. And they discovered this law of performance that has held up for over a hundred years. And it, it applies not just to mice and mazes, but to athletes and their performance, to business people and their performance to standardized testing, to any kind of performance, musical performance, any kind of performance at all, this relationship holds. And it's a, a bit of a unique um, relationship in science. We call this an inverse U-shaped curve, because it's almost like a U upside down, but if you look at it, it's not exactly a U, because it's shifted way toward arousal being very high. And what is arousal? That is your body's, body's readiness for action. You know, how ready are you to perform? So if your arousal level is really low down in here, you're asleep almost. You're asleep. Down in here, you're asleep. So you're sleepy, you're just getting up, and your performance will be very low. This is the um, y-axis is your performance and the x-axis is your arousal. So when you're sleeping, your performance is really low. And that is not gonna help you in any kind of performance. But at the other extreme, mostly what I've seen with athletes and musicians and people trying to perform is that their, their arousal is too high, and that's also a catastrophe. Um, you know, their, as their arousal gets extreme, you know, and almost verges on panic where they can't quite think right, um, where their breathing's really rapid, as their arousal gets really extreme, their performance just goes down the drain. So, you know, if we can get athletes to, and and executives and whoever performing with a lot of arousal, they're going to do well, but we don't want it over the top and to turn into panic. I came up with the saying, fear is your friend and pressure is your pal, but panic equals paralysis. And we see that. Um, literally, if you see a deer in headlights, their arousal gets so high that they just freeze up. And in extreme sports, um, say these um, snow, snowboarding and stuff like this, there's a saying that panic equals death. And so when you get into panic, you're in a whole bad place. But if you watch, you know, I played college football. My dad was a coach. and my Dad was one of my high school coaches. I've been around coaches my whole life, and they really drum up their athletes. They really try to juice them up. They're, they're trying to get that arousal pumped. But the thing is, you don't want to get too high. And... How do we prevent that arousal from getting too high? It's a lot of the mindfulness work that I do with people. And if you look back at some of these earlier um, blogs, you'll see um, mindfulness work. And, you know, just breathing and keeping your breath calm. So you want to be, when you're performing, you want to be up here highly aroused but not panicking. So there's, there's two sides to this coin. You, you want to get the arousal up, and you want to keep the panic and anxiety down. So let's talk about the first side of it. The, we've already started a little bit of talking about the panic side. Let's talk about the arousal side. How do you make sure your arousal is high enough to perform at your best? Well, there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, one of them is be sure you get enough sleep the night before. Because again, when you're sleepy, your arousal is really bad. If you don't get enough sleep, you may need some caffeine or whatever um, kind of um, thing that you can take that gives you energy. Um, and of course, the food we eat and when we eat um, is gonna affect your arousal and energy levels. So ideally in a sport or a performance, even a standardized test, you eat about a four or 500 calorie meal about two hours before you perform. And if a performance is going long enough, you may need snack food to carry you, you know, along the way. After you know, an hour and a half or so, you may need um, some simple carbohydrates to get into your system quickly and convert to energy. 
simple carbohydrates that are more sugar based, like you'll see on the NBA or NFL sidelines, they get into your body and blood sugar and turn into energy in about um, 15, 20 minutes. More complex carbohydrates like a sweet potato might take an hour. Proteins and fats take two, three, four hours to get into your, depending on what it is, fats a little longer than proteins, to get into your system and convert to energy. So be sure to have a little bit of fat and protein in your pre-game or pre-performance meal. But um, if you drop or you have not been able to feed yourself and you're performing, you may need some kind of sugary um, substance to, to elevate your um, levels quickly. Um, other things you can do to get the arousal up, you know, as coaches, uh, they give these pep talks to people and all, but you can um, listen to loud music, you know, with your headphones or fast driving music. You can, um, um, you can um, breathe rapidly, um, kind of like <sighs> just a few of those, just to kind of wake yourself up. There are a lot of ways to kind of um, get your energy levels up, but you want to go into your performance motivated and energetic, well-rested, well-fed, and having your brain in that groove where it's ready to perform. And then um, on the flip side of that coin, the panic, over-arousal, extreme arousal side, we want to keep that away. So how do we keep that away? We talked before about the clearing breath where you just blow out like that, and that sends a signal from your brain to your vagus nerve, to your heart, to slow down. So that's gonna slow down, you know, when things are a little over aroused and you watch any um, baseball player just about in uh, major leagues, or you watch an NBA free throw shooter, they're at the line, or a pitcher before they pitch. They're, they've been taught by sports psychologists predominantly, or their coaches, to blow out to reduce arousal. And some of them just do it naturally, but I know that all of them have been instructed at those high levels to, to quickly be able to settle themselves down. Um, uh, another thing is just breathing through your diaphragm. In and out of your nose, in between plays, before you go out to give a pre business presentation. Just if, if the anxiety is building, any chance you get to just to slow your breath. When you control your breathing, you'll pretty much control your arousal. Um, so those are two ways to try to get to your peak. We'll go into more detail about all these things later, but for now, just understanding that relationship. You wanna be juiced and pumped up, but you don't wanna be over aroused. Don't take fear or Pressure is a bad thing. See, it's a good thing because it's going to drive you up towards your peak. And then when you get up there to your peak, we'll, we'll pull it down with breath and um, just calming things. And we'll talk about more about these later. Have a great day and perform at your peak.